I love you, okay? I love you. I love you a lot, son. Give me a hug and kiss. Thanks. Yes. I love you, son. I don't ever want to tell you I don't love you. I love you a lot. I love you, too. What's up, family? It's your boy, Jay Giddens, the father, as usual. Remember, I wanted to touch base with everybody, so I'm going to be paying attention to everybody that come in my live. And I want to let everybody know who watched this back that if you see me live, um... For the most part, it's because I'm trying to connect with people and to figure out who's real, who's bots, scammers, fake people, people who just here um, for people who don't got the balls to, you know, like show who they truly are. So they use fake pages, all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm trying to weed all of that out. Um, and also, I want to give a shout out to myself um, and I want to. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to anybody who supports me because um, there are some some endeavors that I'm embarking on, and I, you know I really am grateful for the the support that I have from any and everybody who is um, supporting me and who has been getting behind me for all of the things that I've been doing. You know, somebody somebody told me recently they said, "Bro, you deserve everything that come to you, bro. I've been watching you for a while, like it, and you've really been working hard." And it really touched me because like. Only people who truly been following me for a while knows that, like, I'm not fake. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the stuff that I say and do, it could seem like I just be making it up. Or, like, I'm just trying to act like that because I want attention or something. Or, like, you know, many people know. What's up, Slice of Life, One Love Family? Many people know that my, you know, my my daughter's mother. Um, when I was younger, guys, unfortunately, I didn't always have the head on my shoulders that I have now. <clears throat> I used to be interested in, you know inappropriate girls and girls that were fast and stuff like that so uh, my first um, the mother of my two eldest daughters my 15 and 11 year old has um, been been doing nothing but making my life a living hell or trying to um, since I decided to stop engaging in physical activity with her and since I decided to stop being in a relationship with her since that time which was about 2015 it's been hell um and um, a lot of you are aware of what I've been going through with that. I want to say I appreciate you all for, for, you know, for just hanging in there with me, sticking it out with me. There's a lot going on with that. Um, I'm going to be doing those updates on my J. Giddens the Paralegal page. So give me a follow on my J. Giddens the Paralegal page. And that's going to be the page that I will be dropping updates. Because there's a lot of updates on the case I want to tell you about. My, my baby mama's lawyers just dipped on her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just dipped on her. My, my baby mama's lawyers just updated the case to say that they're no longer going to be supporting her. So apparently they're starting to realize that when we go to court, it's going to be a lot of truths that come out that they weren't told. Because I'm pretty sure she lied to them and told them like that I'm this horrible guy, this horrible father, that I never wanted to be there, all this stuff. So that's a good sign. I mean, even though they did let her go for the abduction charges, for those who paying attention, they let her go on the abduction charges. They basically dismissed them. They didn't want to lock her up for that. But that 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 has nothing to do with family court. So when we go to family court, that's where it's going to really hit. What's up, Diamond? What's up, family? What's up, Truth Hurts? Shout out to everybody who come into the live. A huge part of this live is to... Um, a huge part of this live is to build up, um, you know what I'm saying, to build up a clientele. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To build up clientele with my people. To, um, what the hell was that, bro? Is that a piece of hair, bro? Is that a piece of hair fall off of that? Um, so, you know, a huge part of this live, again, is to build up um, clientele and to sort of connect with, um... Hey, Gerald and Jay! Did mommy tell y'all come up here? Okay, so go downstairs if mommy didn't tell y'all come up here. So, um, hey, Jewel, go downstairs. <laughs> she said, oh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, so what I've been trying to do lately is just. Oh, mommy, okay, all right, that's fine. But close that door, though. But, um, but yeah, like, um, um, but yeah, family, like, I'm, I'm really trying to connect with people. What's up, Lovely Seven? Hey, Lovely Seven, can you comment if you're a real person? That's all my lives is for now. I don't be really, 
I don't really be doing much on live besides investigating who my followers are. Like, cause I can tell you know you can tell who's fake and who's real. People don't real people don't come into a live where another real person is talking and just leave and don't say nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Real people don't do that, or unless they're people who. Why did you think I asked that? Did Did you hear me say that? No. Why did you think I asked that? Why did you Why did I think you asked? Did you say you said you thought I asked for water? Yeah. You thought I asked you for water? Yeah. Why did you think I asked you for water? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. Okay. That brings me very close to wanting to pop you, Jade. You know why I want to pop you? Come here. Come over here. Because you know I don't have no cut cards. Ain't nothing about to be different because we're in front of the live or none of that. You hear me? What I don't like is I feel like you playing with me. Okay? Because you know for a fact I did not ask you for no water. What I told you and I told Gerald was to go downstairs. That's what you know I said. Oh. So what you're not going to do is play silly in front of me and lie and tell me that you thought I asked you for some water. What you wanted to do was you wanted to make up an excuse to come into the room when I told you not to. So you pretended like you thought I heard. I mean, you pretended like you thought I asked you for water. Okay? Jay, I don't care for your apology. I care for you to not lie and be deceitful to me. Didn't I ask you not to do that? I don't like when you're deceitful to me. That's disrespectful. And if you do that, I'm not able to properly manage you. So what I would like for you to do is take that water back out there because you know for a fact that I did not ask you for it. And next time, if you want to come in, say, Daddy, can I come in, please? Don't lie to me and say you thought I wanted some water. You got me? Okay, go ahead. And now and now, Jewel and, Jewel and Gerald trying to ride your coattail. All right, go ahead and shut the door. All right, so... Now what y'all just now listen, what y'all just seen me do, right? I don't know if anybody was able to catch what I just did on the live, right? But what y'all just seen me do, that's what people need to do with their kids all the time. When your kids try to play with you, embarrass them. Don't 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 do them little oh trying to play No, we're not playing them games because you're not gonna I'm not gonna teach you to be a fool. You know what I'm saying? That's why they grow up. They grow up and they have no accountability, bro. They grow up and they start doing stuff and just acting like they ain't do it. Hmm. You know, you know these these adults out here that, that be that be fucking liars. They be deceitful ass conniving liars. They say stuff and they don't really mean it or they don't really, you know what I'm saying? They take it back. They act like they didn't say it. All that little fake stuff. That stuff come from your parent letting you be a weakling. You know what I'm saying? A coward. I ain't never gonna raise my children to be no coward, man. I'd rather my children hit me in my mouth than lie to me, man. Don't ever lie to nobody. You know what I'm saying? That's You said I said it was amazing because most are taught to be physical. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, I will, I will be physical with my younger children. So, like, if my child is one, two, you know, maybe three, you know, justice, is, I mean, that's called her justice. Jade is four, uh, but Jade is very advanced. Like, she's beyond your average 10-year-old, and she's four. And that's based on my experience with kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? She's just advanced. So I don't treat her the same. But once they are able to perceive what you're saying, once they're able to articulate and all of that, there's no reason to be hitting your child. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you just, you just, you just bullying them and you, you abusing them. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody should be hitting their child, bro. Like, you shouldn't, your child shouldn't be 10, 11 years old and you beating on your child, bro, for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, they can understand you. What are you hitting them for? Like, all that is, is just, it just, it just, it just makes it clear that you have no control over yourself and you damn sure don't have no control over your child. Because if you got to put your hands on your child, they don't, you ain't got no type of control over them because that means they don't give a fuck about you. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can make anybody do what you say by putting your hands on them. You, you want to have the power to not have to put your hands on them. You know what I'm saying? You want you to matter to them so much that what you say shakes them. You know what I'm saying? And most parents fuck that up for themselves by putting their hands on the child. Because once you start hitting the child, now they don't fear what you say and what you feel no more. They fear you hitting them. So, you know, and, and I don't hit my children unless I'm punishing them. But I don't think that you teach a child by hitting them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not how you teach them. That's how you punish them. So, like, for instance, if my son put his hands on his mother, put his hands on my goddess, I might put my hands on him. And that's not to teach him. 
that would be to punish him for doing such a thing, right? If I was trying to teach him that he shouldn't hit his mother, why would I beat him up? That's not that's not going to teach him anything. If anything, that's going to teach him to to want to fight me. You know what I'm saying? That's going to teach him to want to get bigger and stronger than me and beat the shit out of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? And hate me his whole life. And that's what most parents do. They just make their children hate them. You know, you don't want to do that. Um, I would recommend that you just talk to them and explain to them what you feel and be very stern. You know, when I speak, I'm very stern. I don't have no cut cards or none of that when I'm speaking to my children. I speak very stern and strong. And I tell them to be the same way. I don't I don't raise weaklings. I don't I don't like weaklings, bro. Like I don't know how to explain it. Like, you know. And the crazy thing is I'm a small guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a small guy. I'm not even big, bro. I'm five two. A hundred pounds. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a small guy. But I don't like weakness. Like I can't stand somebody who's weak. I can't stand somebody who always want to play victim and cry like somebody did something to them and they don't want to ever do anything to help themselves. They just, you know, they just, oh, they keep doing that to me. Oh, them, them, them. Look at them. Look at them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't stand that. Like, bro, what did you do in it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there are people who would try to say that about me. They try to say that all I do is play victim about my baby mother. That's not true at all. I, I know that I caused this. My silly ass was dumb enough to get a girl pregnant who didn't know how to keep her legs closed. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got a girl pregnant who I knew before I even got pregnant was not worthy of having a baby. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then I knew she was a bad mother and got her pregnant again. That was crazy. That was my dumbness. You know? So I'm I'm not anybody's victim. I made stupid decisions and I'm not blaming nobody. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want other guys to fall into the same trap I felt in, fell into. And the only way I can try to help other people is to let them know what's going on. So I spread awareness. I don't get on the internet and cry, nigga. I don't, I don't care to cry. I don't care to be babied or padded up. Like, that's not my thing. You know what I'm saying? But I do want to, um, I do want to spread awareness, spread information and insight and, you know, and motivate and inspire other people to want to, do the same thing that I'm doing. Um, and I, you know, I put myself in other people's shoes a lot. You know, I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to to feel alone, like you got nothing and nobody. I know what it feels like to to have, you know, nobody really get what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit can make you feel suicidal. Like that shit can make you depressed. It can make you give up on everything that you like ever wanted to do. And it can make you a very unproductive member of society, you know? And that's no good. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be an unproductive member of society. So, yeah. Um, hold on. So, yeah. Um, because nobody wants to be an unproductive member. Nobody wants to be an unproductive member of society. Um, or nobody wants a... Well, nobody wants an unproductive member of society. Unproductive member of society. You got to raise your kids to be better than that, man. You got to raise your kids to be better than that. And a lot of, you know, these adults, man, they be, I don't want to say they be killing me because I don't want to speak my demise into existence. But these adults, man, they be annoying me, bro, because like they be on here on these TikToks and on social media and stuff making videos with their kids. And these videos are turning their children into the most delinquent, unproductive motherfuckers they could ever be. Like, why are you, um, you know, why are you sitting there, you said speaking to the soul right now, why are you sitting there, like, teaching your child to be a piece of shit, bro? Like, I, bro, I, I sit there, yo, I'm a father, I'm a father of six children, bro. I raised all my children. I cut the umbilical cord, brought them home, still raising all of them. And as a father of six children who has parented my children alongside a mother, also have little cousins, nieces, nephews that I, I parent and help as well, I cannot understand for the life of me why the hell as a parent, as an adult, you would want to be doing some of the shit that I see these people doing with their kids, bro. Like, like, it's like these people are depressed and lonely and don't have no friends, so they just want they, 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 they child to be their friend. Like, why is there so many grown women out here, like, doing promiscuous, inappropriate shit with their daughters on, on live and shit? Like, it's cute. Sitting there twerking, doing dances that they know is inappropriate, that'll get your daughter fucked on her way home from school. They doing that kind of shit, because they just want, you said I can relate to everything you're saying. Yeah, like, they just want, 
They just want to be in, bro. It's like they vicariously living. They're vicariously living through their children. Like, they want to be young again. They want to be wanted. They want to be, you know what I'm saying, out there fucking every Tom, Dick, and Harry, bro. And that's so dangerous because they have no accountability for what they're doing because it doesn't it doesn't affect them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't affect them. When they have their daughters out there dressed half naked and all of that shit, it doesn't affect them. Because don't nobody want to fuck them anyway. It affects their kids. The kids are the ones that, that all of their homeboys that they knew from school, that the grown-ups that's come around is looking at their daughters wanting to fuck them and shit. You know what I'm saying? And they know it. They just try and play like they don't. Or they using it to get favors out of the niggas because they know the niggas want to come around because they want to fuck her daughter, but they know he can't fuck her daughter as long as she there. So she just keep him, keep him enticed and keep him interested, but also make sure she do what she got to do to prevent him from doing it. But that's playing a dangerous game and you shouldn't even be doing that with your child, bro. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is the kind of stuff that women doing and trying to play like they not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Trying to act like, trying to act like everything is all sweet and you know what I'm saying? But they out here, you know what I'm saying? They out here getting their they daughters to sleep with men, bro. And then they out here enticing men to want to sleep with their daughters and not telling their daughters nothing about it, bro. These women is not, right, semi, single women keep women single. These women is not talking to these young girls about men trying to fuck them, bro. Like, because if you was, then the only conclusion I could come to is that you want men to fuck your daughter because that's what she doing. She out there, like, trying to promote it. And be promiscuous and get guys to fuck her. So, like, you know what I'm saying? I just, I can't understand why you would want your... Bro, just so much, so far tonight when I was on my way in the house, bro, I seen so many, like, so many young girls who was just dressed provocatively and inappropriately to the point where it made me feel uncomfortable, bro. My baby, listen, my baby mother hates that about me. She even put in the court documents, I'll show y'all. She put in the court documents that one of my, um... Ha, ah, true first, you right, you right, you right. I ain't smoking, I'm just rolling. But look, she put on one of my um she put she put on one of the court documents that she thinks that I shouldn't have my kids because I I make them feel uncomfortable with what they wear around me. Because I tell my kids that they not gonna dress inappropriately around me. You're not gonna walk around with fucking leggings with your pussy showing through your fucking pants. What the fuck would I wanna see that for? I'm your fucking father. But that pissed my baby mother off. Like, she asked, oh, he trying to tell them that they can't have their pussy out. Like, I mean, bro, that shit weird, bro. Like, she really, like, so, how about the spark that ain't rolling? Stop playing with me, True Purse. <laughs> True Purse, don't be, hey, <laughs> you get on my nerves, yo. <laughs> I'm saying, stop playing me, you about to spark it. I ain't even rolling yet. I ain't even gonna spark it. I still got the grass. I still got, listen, I still got the. I still got the goddamn grass on the paper. How I'm going to roll it? I'm going I'm to spark it. Nah, I probably am going to spark it, though. <laughs> I ain't going to start. I probably am going to spark it. It don't matter. You said I thought you was rolling that shit this whole time. Nah, I've been talking. I was breaking it up. I was breaking it up the whole time. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a long roller, bro. Like, I'm long-winded. I talk. I just, you know what I'm saying? It take a while for me to uh to really get through what I'm trying to get through. You know what I'm saying? But um, But, yeah, family, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we really, we really gotta, um, <laughs> we really gotta do better with our, with our, with our daughters, man. And, and you know, it pissed me up. Our men, listen, to my men out there, y'all don't gotta say nothing. You don't gotta comment or nothing. But listen, man, y'all gotta stop doing this shit where you trying to say, you know, oh, it's no way that, you know, a girl who is 14, 15 years old can look attractive. Like, bro, that's a fucking lie. Why y'all saying that? Y'all so scared that somebody gonna call you a pedophile and you so scared that somebody gonna say you like little girls that you just lying. And that's scary to me. Because why are you lying though? You know what I'm saying? Like stop lying. Just don't say nothing. But why are you lying? Like you know what I'm saying? Don't lie and say that it's impossible for a 14, 15, or 16 year old to be attractive to a grown man. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? I, I was I was talking to a guy recently. He just kept on swearing up and down. No, there's no way. So you mean to tell me if you see a girl that's bad as shit, she's sexy, you want to have sex with her, and you looking at you like, damn. And then somebody tell you, oh, yo, she's 16. You mean to tell me that now all of a sudden everything that you felt before just go away? 
Bro, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You sound like you lying to me. You sound like somebody who would never want anybody to find out what you really think. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's what it sounds to me because like that's bullshit, bro. I see I see teenagers all the time and you not I they don't look no different than the grown ass bitches I see on Baltimore Street in the club. Literally, I had a pickup. For those who don't know, I do it as. I had a pickup downtown near the strip club. I literally could not tell how old the girls that was outside was. I thought they was... I'm like, what is these girls doing down here? They look like they just got out of school or something. But they could have been working at the club. I don't know. Because they all look the fucking same, bro. Because y'all not letting y'all children be children no more. Like, y'all letting the fucking 13-year-old look like a 23-year-old. Like, why? That's insane. And then y'all letting them do the same shit adults do. You know what I'm saying? And then when a nigga, a grown-ass man is interested in your daughter, you want to get the nigga killed and shit. Like, what the fuck? And I'm not trying to say that a nigga should be interested in a young girl because if a nigga interested in my young daughter, I got a problem with that. Granted, I do got a problem with me allowing my daughter to look fuckable, if that's the case. If that's not the case, then obviously we that's not the case. We don't have to talk about it. But if that is the case and my daughter's walking around enticing men to want to fuck her... Like, that's a problem to me. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean that men should go around touching little girls? Nigga, no. And how could you be slow enough to think that that's what I'm saying? What the fuck? That sounds dumb as shit. Why would I say men should go around touching girls? What the fuck would I say that for? I got five daughters. People would be silly enough to actually let that shit process in their brain <laughs> that, I, that I'm saying that. But what I will say is, though, you know, girls should not be out here enticing men to do things to them. That's all I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? If you got a wallet, if you got a key, if you lock your car door, then you should understand the concept of not going outside dressing like a fucking hoe. You know what I'm saying? Like, because why do you lock your car? Why do you lock your car? Nobody should break in it, right? So what you locking it for? Right? Right? Right. Nobody has the right to break in your car. So why you locking it, right? Just like nobody has the right to follow you home and rape you. So why are you not covering up? Like, why you not, why is that not important? Like, why, you know what I'm saying? Why do niggas get security passcodes to their bank accounts and hide their money in their po pocket in their wallet because they don't want nobody to steal it, but then walk around with your ass and your pussy just out there? Like, so a nigga, so you scared, you got a purse because you want to protect your, your... <laughs> yeah, I see how silly this shit is that I'm saying, bro. <laughs> you got a purse because you want to protect your... Oh, uh, what's up? What's up, Trish? Trish, I don't know if you're going to like this live. You might want to. I don't know. I, I mean, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I sometimes be saying stuff that, you know, all women don't like, you know. Right now, I'm just speaking on the whole, you know, the whole thing about covering up. Like, you know what I'm saying? For, for young girls. I'm not talking about women. If you're a grown woman, hey, do what you got to do. But for young girls, you know, why do young girls have purses to protect all of their stuff, right? Because they know somebody might steal it. They got wallet. They got all this stuff protecting their stuff. They got keys to lock their car, right? But they just leave the pussy just unprotected. You know what I'm saying? The pussy just be completely unprotected. They don't, they don't cover it up. They not, they not making it look like it's taken. Nothing. They just have that motherfucker just out there, just, just up for grabs for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like that's insane, bro. That's insane that you find your car to be of more value to protect than your body. It's insane that you would sit there. And tell a girl that she's insane for leaving her car door unlocked or leaving her car unattended at the gas station, right? But but she okay to come outside with her titties and ass just hanging out everywhere. Like like niggas won't do something to her. I don't know, bro. I, I, I just like I said, it ain't happening to no young ladies around me, bro. That's all I'ma say. You know what I'm saying? If you got young women around me, you ain't gonna wanna you know what I'm saying? You ain't fucking no young women around me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why niggas probably don't like me. They gonna be like, yo, I don't wanna be around that nigga, yo. I can't fuck little girls around him, bro. He always talking about it and bringing it up. I don't like talking about it. Right, because it make you uncomfortable because your ass like to touch little girls. I mean, real talk, like, you, yo, why would it make you feel uncomfortable if you don't do it? If we were sitting here talking about, like, you know, selling cocaine, right? Why would you be uncomfortable talking about it unless you do it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you sit there, and, yo, I'm telling you right now, bro. If you walk in a room and be like, yo, shit, yo, that coke be crazy. Anybody who sell coke, sell coke, use coke, uh, buy coke for somebody, transport coke for somebody, going to all do like this. And be looking at you, watching every word you say. 
because coke is on their mind and they, that's what they do. Like, you know what I'm saying? So when you say, yo, niggas out here always want to touch little girls and somebody, what you talking about that for, yo? It don't matter. Why you always want to talk about it? Man, stop talking about that. Girls can wear what they want to wear, man. You always trying to tell girls they can't, they can, you know what I'm saying? And they get real defensive. They, they get real, like you can tell they just like, they, they want to change the subject. They don't want to talk about it. They, they, they start blaming you. They start saying you a pedophile. They, they start doing all of this stuff, bro, because they uncomfortable. And, like, it's obvious, you know what I'm saying? Like, to a point where I sometimes will start the conversation around certain men to see how they react. Because a man, I'm going to tell you right now, a man who is against pedophilia, against molestation, and against young girls being sexualized, he ain't quiet about it. He ain't quiet about it. And he ain't about to be quiet about it. I don't give a fuck who around. He going to say what he got to say. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because he's standing on it. You know what I'm saying? But niggas who don't feel like that, mm, they ain't really got a lot to talk about. They, they, mm, whatever. You know, those them chauvinistic men that disrespect women and don't have no respect for them probably raped a couple in their lifetime. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it 100. These be the guys sitting right next to you, your homeboys. That's real talk, yo. Homeboy sitting right next to you, raping women. Yeah, yeah. I knew a guy. I ain't going to put him out there like that, but I knew a guy. I mean, I still know him. I don't deal with him, but I knew a guy who had a good friend who was a rapist. And he knew that that nigga was a rapist. He wasn't a rapist like be going around and like roof and be going around and like abducting bitches, raping them. But he was he was the kind of rapist where he puts drinks, he puts pills in girls' drinks, and he roofy girls and stuff like that, right? And I knew this dude that was friends with him, and the dude like wouldn't stop being friends with him. He was like, you know, I don't like what he doing, but you know that's my man, blah blah blah, yeah. And I'm just thinking about that, like yo, that was fucked up, yo. Like you you know what this man does, bro. You know that he rapes girls. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he really rapes girls. And you going to just chill with him. You smoking blunts with him. You hanging out with him. Kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that this man do that. That's crazy. Like, I can't even trust you around my kids. Because what if somebody doing that to my kids? You ain't going to speak up. Clearly. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, you can... You can tell a lot about a person by what they willing to tolerate and what they not. You know what I'm saying? So when you got them people that's like, you know, as soon as you say something about something, they on it. As soon as you say something about child abuse or something like that, they 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 on it. They, they you know what I'm saying? They front and center want to talk about the conversation, want to give ideas, thoughts, and all of that. They against it. But the ones that get real quiet and clammy when you start talking about certain things, pay attention to them, right? But look, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off here, y'all. Remember to be positive, be optimistic, keep positive people in your circle as those three things are key to ensuring positivity is invited in your future.